Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to stop by on another Teach Me Something Tuesday and remind you that you have the power. You have the power to help students grow. You have the power to confront students' professional issues in the classroom and help them transfer over into the clinical environment better. It can be something as small as being on their cell phone or packing up early from class. And while that may seem like minor offenses, and it may be depending upon the situation, Don't underestimate the magnitude of the compound effect of those minor things that you may casually observe in the classroom and think they're no big deal. Speaking as a DCE myself, they can often add up quickly. Now, a lot of programs have very standard codes of conduct, and I hope that you are being uniform and enforcing them across the curriculum, across every lab, across every classroom. If not, I want to empower you for you to know that you are the leader and you can help with that. Our number one issue in the clinic is professional issues. And they are very gray and very sometimes mucky and in the muck mire to deal with. And if you're nervous about dealing with that and confronting that in your own classroom or your own lab, enlist your program's DCE for suggestions or help. I promise you they will help you with suggestions or even being a witness to that because it is so much easier to curb those behaviors on the front side than to allow them to go into the clinic. I promise, I promise, I promise. It may be awkward. It may be uncomfortable. It may be frustrating because if you are really teaching something technical and you're teaching some of the hard science, some of the really difficult things, you want to go teach about what you find fun and cool. I get it. We all want to in our own special areas, but please don't overlook that. Please don't overlook these minor, they just seem like minor offenses often, and correct them. It doesn't have to be a write-up, but it may be a write-up. It may be enough to write them up. And so whatever that process is for your program and however you guys deem that, please don't overlook that throughout the semester. Uh, Every program has to have faculty input on whether students are ready to be released to the clinic after their didactic work. So please don't wait to the end of the semester and go, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. If it's happening habitually, let's nip it now. Let's nip it in the bud now and get that student aware of what's going on and why this is a a problem. And I promise you clinical life will go better for your colleagues that have to do clinical education and for your students as well. So I want to encourage you to embrace your power in professionalism and be the light, be the strong one who calls students out and sets that example for them. 
It's helpful for everyone. It's, it's helpful for not only the student, your other colleagues, but the future of the profession as a whole. Well, I hope that episode was entertaining as much as it was informational and educational. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes, we ask you to please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. And please share out the episodes to those who you feel may be able to benefit from them. We also urge you to follow us on all social media platforms at HET Podcast and let us know what topics or experts you would like to hear from in future episodes. And just as a reminder, none of the information on today's show should be considered medical advice. It's simply infotainment or edutainment to help educate our audience. For medical advice, we always advise you to reach out to your preferred medical professionals, and we'll see you on the next show.